Oh my God, take number five of me trying to do this video. Hey, what's up everyone? It's me, Narada African Hair God. I'm just gonna go ahead and fly through this because I'm tired of saying the same shit and my shit fucking up. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna get through this. I'm just gonna get through this. Love y'all, appreciate y'all. Make sure y'all hit that thumbs up. I really appreciate it. All right, so today we are going to talk about TWA, maintaining and caring for a TWA. Now, I get a lot of questions about this. Um, T maintaining TWAs is not hard, so this video should not be too, too long, but y'all know I like to break stuff down, so we just gonna go ahead and jump into it. So what is a TWA? TWA stands for Teeny Weeny Afro, for those of you that did not know. There is no technical classification or definition for a TWA, but I'm going to assume, from my perspective, I would say a TWA is somewhere anywhere between two to three inches to maybe six to eight inches. I feel like once you start hitting on eight inches of hair length, then you start getting, going into the big girl territory, you know? Um, so what is so difficult about caring for a TWA? Honestly, nothing. There's, it's nothing hard about caring for a TWA. It's less hair to deal with. Um, it's not really much for you to do. You shouldn't really need to be doing too many treatments on your hair to keep it on your head. Like, it's, 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 it's pretty easy. That first year that you rock your TWA should be the simplest, easiest, phase in your whole hair journey. It, it really should. Now, as far as styling goes, eh, that's kind of relative because it depends on what type of style you're doing. And of course, what you have in, like say you're doing two strand twists or doing a twist out or something. If you're doing individual two strands, yeah, it's going, you're going to have to do the twist smaller. So it's going to take longer to get it all over your head. But if your hair was longer, then you could do them larger and just fluff it out a bit more. So yeah, eh, give it take, give it take. Um, by definition, though, short hair is stronger than long hair. You know, we can think of this if you grab if you grab somebody's hair and you get a fistful of like three inches of hair, it's not going anywhere. You might be jerking their head around or whatever. You know, you might be scooping them up, to, you know, when you beating them up or whatever. But if you grab a fistful of like long hair, like maybe like eight to 10 inches and you start yanking and pulling, you're more liable to get more snap, crackling, pop going on with them strands. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, I'm not going to get into all the scientific schematics and stuff regarding that, but just know that short hair is, in fact, stronger than longer hair, which is why it should be easy for you to maintain this TWA. Now, what are the biggest issues with T, growing out of TWA. So I encounter a couple of things. The first thing I encounter um, with people experiencing issues is mechanical damage. This includes excessive brushing, combing, heat styling, um, and excessive cutting. Yeah, there's some people who are just really scissor happy and they feel like they have to cut their hair or they, their hair is just constantly damaged. And so while that doesn't constitute as damage, um, I do find it for a lot of people, it's a hindrance with them growing out their hair and retaining length, but hey. Um, so what does all this mechanical damage lead to? Well, it leads to split ends, which is also known as trichoptilosis, and it also leads to single strand knots, or it can lead to single strand knots, which the scientific term for that is trichondinosis, okay? Um, and it can lead to breakage, which is really the biggest issue that I encounter with people growing out their TWAs. You don't want to experience issues like breakage and split ends early on because these things can take time to rectify and fix. And um, you kind of want to go into your hair journey on a great foundation. You don't want to start off bad. It, ju it just leads to a bad situation. Uh, so, uh, let's see. Oh, I get a lot of questions regarding um, single strand knots. So I did want to just take a moment to address some of those. So I did do some research and I did come across some studies um, where research was done on um, trichondinosis and or single strand knots, also known as fairy knots, the little nose that you get on a single strand of hair. So there tends to be two causes of it. Um, for some people, and I, I would imagine it's a very small percentage of people, it is um, just genetically or just, um, they're just predisposed to have those nodes on their hair. Like their hair literally just grows out and for some reason it does this weird funky thing as the hair grows out and it causes it to form into like a little cherry knot. 
Um, yeah, I would imagine that's a small percentage of people. The rest of y'all, it's self-induced. You're like you you you're doing too much. You're not doing enough, and people would think that you don't experience single strand knots on TWAs, but um, I've seen it happen. Um, this can be. In my experience, from the research, let me start with the research. The research says it can be due to heat styling, excessive combing and brushing. Um, what else? Um, of course, chemical um, damage. Um, I've said heat. Uh, it's, they mentioned blow drying and flat iron, and I would imagine indirect heat, um, such as like setting your hair on perm rods and things, if it's excessive, could also lead to it as well, I'm, I'm considering. Um, in my experience though, I, I tend to find that people that have chronic dryness issues with their hair tend to experience more of these single strand knots on their strands. So I would like to think that it is, a, a large part of it is due to a lack of moisture or moisture balance in the hair. So for the people that tend to have chronic dryness, to prevent the single strand knots, I would imagine that you need to take more care and making sure that your hair is constantly hydrated throughout the week. Do not allow your hair to dry out excessively as this could lead to it. Um, and I also believe that the brushing and the combing, sometimes when our hair is brushed and combed, it, it causes the strand to stretch. And if your hair is not properly hydrated with water, it's going, the elasticity is not there. So it overstretches and maybe it pulls back in and forms this little weird looking bump on the hair strand. Um, so yeah, the studies also said there is no treatment to uh, treat this. Um, so all you can really do is cut it off or um, just up the ante on your hair care practices. Basically meaning you need to care for your hair better, okay? Um, so the second issue that a lot of people encounter, which this kind of ties into what we just talked about, is lack of moisture. So um, a lot of people just are not moisturizing their hair often enough or they are overcompensating what they perceive to be dryness um, as texture and they are smothering their hair with gunk and gel and edge control and oil and butter and, and everything else except what it needs, which is water. So if we're going to talk about hydrating, I, I, I want to expand the concept of hydrating. So we all know Basically, with hydrating, I mean, not hydrating, with moisturizing, when we talk about moisturizing hair, we're talking about introducing water to the hair and then applying oil to create this layer to help hold the water to the hair longer. Um, so when we talk about moisturizing, there's actually two steps, which I just broke down. You have the hydrating, um, which is introducing water or applying um, products and ingredients that have um, water binding properties to it, meaning like, for instance, humectants, which attract and draw moisture to from the atmosphere and hold it to whatever surface it's applied on. So um, this would be glycerin, this would be things like, you know, I, I guess aloe vera. I'm, I've heard of some oils also um, serving as humectants as well. I'm not too sure about that. But um, yeah, as far as the second step, that would be considered moisturizing. And that is where you're applying oils or butters or products that have these layers of emollients in there to coat, protect, and hold in that moisture to the hair and prevent it from evaporating as fast, okay? So when you are talking about moisturizing hair, and this goes for all lengths of hair, it don't matter if it's a TWA or what, Literally, the goal is to introduce water to the hair and then layer it with products and or oils that are going to hold that moisture in that, well, yeah, that, that water to that hair longer, okay? I'm starting to confuse myself, I know. It's because I'm rushing through this video so this shit don't mess up again. All right, <laughs> anyways. Um, so what would your process be on a typical wash day for moisturizing? Well, you would, if you go back on my video, and I'll link it in the description. I don't have, I don't have it prepared to do all this now. But I actually talk about moisturizing hair, and I actually had a TWA at the time, so it kind of works out too. You shampoo the hair, get it clean, you condition the hair, okay, put back on and what you took off, 
And at that point, after you shampooed and conditioned and towel dried your hair, your hair is hydrated. Because why? We literally just went through two processes where our hair was completely saturated with water. And now that our hair is towel dried, all of the excess water that our hair cannot hold is now released. And all that's left is the water that's in the hair that's meant to be there. So what you do next is everything that you do after the fact is moisturizing. You're literally layering on moisturizers, leave-ins, products, gels, things that are going to lock in or um, slow the rate of evaporation of moisture out of that hair. And that's it. That's, that's as simple as it gets. Moisturizing hair is not hard. It's not difficult. It's not complicated. We make it complicated, okay? Now, I understand some of y'all anti-oils. Some of y'all love the oils. It don't matter what moisturizer you use as long as you use something to moisturize, okay? I'm not going to tell you what to use or how to use it. Just make sure you use it properly. Um, also, some products such as cream moisturizers do in fact serve as both hydrators and moisturizers. However, they don't they don't have the capability to hydrate as much as if you directly introduce water to the hair. Does that make sense? While the product does have water content and it does hydrate a little bit, it's not able to hydrate to the extent of you actually spraying on and allowing your hair to absorb water before you apply your moisturizers after the fact, okay? Wanted to clear that up too. All right, so what are some things to think about as you are growing out your TWA? This is the last part, so we should be wrapping this up really quick. Um, you may find that you may want or need to cleanse your hair more often, and that's okay. Um, there's a big misconception that Cleansing your hair multiple times in a week is going to dry it out, make your hair brittle, make it break, give you split ends, give you cancer, uh, make your hair fall out, all of that. It's fine. It's it's fine. If you, if you are washing your hair multiple times during the week, shampooing and conditioning, and you are finding that it's causing your hair to experience a tad bit more, be more drier than usual, then yeah, maybe pull back a little bit. Maybe pull back. But for most people, I, I doubt that's the case because, like I said, if you're doing the shampooing process properly, you, you really shouldn't be having these issues with retaining moisture anyway because that, that all goes in line with moisturizing the hair, okay? Clean hair, conditioned hair, add water, seal in with moisture or moisturizers, sorry. Um, okay. Oh, um... And I will also say that I, I actually did when I had my TWA. I had it like twice because I shaved all my hair and grew it out twice. I um I used to wash my hair on the regular. Like uh I would say probably like three times a week, every other day. Um it was just kind of weird for me. I would like go out and about, work out, sweat, get all dirty and nasty, and then come home and take a shower, and then it would just be really weird for me to cleanse my body and then up here it's like full of sweat, gunk, and everything else. And it was just like three inches of hair. And it was just like why why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you cleanse this? Like why why not? Why not? Um I didn't experience any um you know, issues or breakage from detangling or anything like that, but I'm gonna get into that in a second. So next point I wanna make is to not be afraid of shedding. I don't know why um, everyone's afraid of shedding, but shedding is a natural part of the hair growth cycle, if you didn't know. Um, you actually want your hair to shed, like, Maybe not excessively, no. You definitely don't want, if it's excessive, then yeah, it's a problem and we need to get that rectified. But you don't need to stop shedding. You don't need to prevent shedding. It's it's fine. It's meant to happen. Um, I, I, it's just kind of strange. Like, you know, our skin sheds every day and we don't try to keep all the dead skin on, you know, on our body, we, we let it shed. We exfoliate, we, we cleanse, we rub, we exfoliate, we get all that off. So... Why is it when our hair wants to release and so that a new strand can grow in, we are trying to prevent that from happening? It's it's meant to happen. Allow it to happen. Um, oh, I will also say, as your TWA grows out, your shedding is going to look, gradually it's going to look more and more massive. Why is this? Because we know our hair sheds about 100 to 150 strands of hair per day. More, it sheds more if you are uh, of thicker density. 
So 100 strands of three inches of hair is not going to look the same as 100 strands of 10 inches of hair. Okay, so that's something I encounter a lot. A lot of people are like, oh my God, my shitting is getting out of control. No, your hair is just, it's growing and it's, it's healthy. It's, it's fine. You're okay. You're okay. You're okay. Um, last thing, as your hair gets longer, you will need to adjust your routine, your techniques, and maybe even your products. Um, so this just comes with becoming familiar with your hair and learning what works. Um, for me... With my TWA, I had no issue with um, shampooing and conditioning my hair on a three-time-per-week basis. I would literally shampoo, apply the conditioner, take an Afro pick, and literally just comb through all of my hair from the front to the back. Just comb through the conditioner, and it was fine. Once my hair started hitting about five inches... I tried to do that same combing through, and it, it would get caught. It would it would get it would pull. I would get more uh, breakage in the pick, um, so I was experiencing breakage, and so all of that excessive combing was too much for my longer hair to handle, but not for my shorter hair because why? We know shorter hair is stronger than longer hair. Okay, all right. Okay, just making sure you're listening. So, um, yeah, I had to adjust my tech, my routine and not shampoo my hair as often because the whole shampooing and conditioning and detangling started to be a stressful process for my hair. So I had to minimize that as much as possible and minimize the amount that I was detangling my hair so that I wouldn't cause mechanical damage. Um, another issue... Um, a lot of people tend to try to get a lot of volume and lift with their, their TWAs and pick it out every day, all the day, every day, all the time, and get a full voluminous afro because we want to see our length. Don't do that. I mean, you, you can do whatever you want. You, you can do whatever you want. It's short hair. You know, I'm not going to tell you what to do. But you probably shouldn't do it because, again, all of that picking can lead to excessive breakage. A lot of people say they get a lot of breakage in the crown area, and I find that it's because a lot of people are trying to get that lift and that volume at, at the root, at the top of their head, and maybe your hair is just meant to shrink. Maybe your hair is just meant to be flat there, you know, and it's okay. You know, you don't have to have big, voluminous hair every day. If it ain't meant, you know, some people's hair, they wake up and their hair is just big and voluminous. That's That just may not be for you. Um, also... Learn to embrace your shrinkage. Yeah, you know, uh, shrinkage is a part of being natural. It's a part of having a curl pattern, and and it's it's funny that we vilify shrinkage, um, and then when we don't have the shrinkage, then it's like, oh my god, I'm losing my mind. I need to cut my hair because I have heat damage. Embrace the shrinkage. It's okay. It's okay if you want to get a little stretch, show off your length every now and again. But shrinkage is not your enemy. Learn to embrace it. Learn to be okay with it. And learn to accept your hair for what it is and what it isn't. Okay? And with that, that concludes this video. This video ended up being 18 fucking minutes anyway. Ain't that a bitch? All right. Thank you all so much for watching and tuning in. If you have any questions, leave it in the comment section below. And um, I'll see you on the next one. Until then, be blessed. Bye.